In this video, I'm going to show you how you can safely test out pre-release or beta software. So one of the things that I really enjoy doing is testing out new releases of the software I use to create my e-learning. For example, we're all eagerly anticipating the new release of Adobe Captivate. So when, when the time comes to test out the beta version of Adobe Captivate 2022, perhaps, maybe that's what it will be called, uh, you want to do so so that it doesn't interfere with your production uh, system that you're running. So for example, I have a computer that runs Windows 10. Sure, I could upgrade it to Windows 11, but you know it's stable. I want to stick with what works. And of course, I'm using Adobe Captivate 2019 and of course, all the other software I use. So I don't want to install a beta version of Adobe Captivate on the same machine because of course, it could be changing files that are crucial for the current version to run uh, effectively and well. So here's my process for testing out new software in a safe sandbox-like environment. So the first thing I need to do is use a tool called Hyper-V. Now this is a, a virtual agent for running instances of Windows and other software on top of it. And uh, what you typically want to do is click your start menu and go in and type in turn Windows features on or off. If you're run running Windows Professional, you have access to this. And uh, you'll find that Hyper-V is located in the list of optional features. So I've already gone ahead and turned it on. The reason I did this beforehand is that it requires you to restart your computer and it does some additional installations. And you can expect to have to restart your computer to uh, install Hyper-V. But I've already done that. So that's, uh, that's all set up. The other thing I've done, as you can see here on my desktop, I've downloaded a fresh ISO of Windows 10. Now you can do this from the Microsoft site. The easiest way to find this is to just Google search Windows 10 ISO, or you could do this with Windows 11, uh, so long as you have a activation code for that particular uh, operating system. I actually don't, so I will be not activating this version of Windows, um, but it's for temporary purposes. So my intention is not to pirate Windows 10. It's actually just to test some software that will be coming out in the future. So the first thing I need to do, click the Start button and type in Hyper-V, and you'll see Hyper-V Manager here. And we're just going to open this up. You don't need to run it as an administrator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the name of my current computer and create a new virtual machine. And I'm just going to follow the wizard here and I'll show you the settings that I'm going to use and you can use the same ones if you wish. So I'm going to go ahead and click next, give the virtual machine a name. We'll just call this beta test. Doesn't have to be anything in particular. It's going to store the data related to your virtual machine in the following folder. You could change that if you felt it necessary. I'm going to stick with the defaults for most everything I'm doing here. Now, the next thing we need to do is select Generation 2. This virtual machine generation provides support for newer hardware. And I would recommend this if you're going to be testing out uh, any of the newer Windows operating systems along with whatever software from Adobe that you might be testing out here. So I'm going to switch to Generation 2 and click Next. Now this is going to be the amount of RAM that your virtual machine is going to run. I would stick with at least 2 gigabytes, but you can go more if you wish. You can just bump this up. I'm going to go with 4,000, but of course remember it's actually pulling from your real RAM, so you don't want to choose too much or your operating system won't run properly. I have 32 gigabytes of RAM, so four gigs is plenty for this particular virtual machine. I'm gonna click Next. Uh, this is uh, related to your networking. So obviously, if you wanna be able to use the internet, which you'll need, of course, to download the beta software, 
uh, switch it from not connected to default switch. I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And so everything's set up the way it is here. Uh, you could decrease the size of the hard drive. In fact, you probably don't need 127 gigabytes. Um, you know, 64 gigabytes is probably fine for testing a single piece of software like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. And uh, I'm gonna install an operating system right now. So I'm gonna select this option and I'm gonna to browse to my desktop where I have that Windows 10 English X64 ISO. This is actually the original Windows 10. So it's, I, I chose it just so that you could see visually I'm running a different operating system on my screen. So let's click open. We'll click next and we'll click finish. Now, one thing I'm going to do that's a little bit different is I'm gonna right click on this, go to settings, and we're gonna increase the number of virtual processors. So in this case here, uh, I'm running a six core processor. So I think it's safe to say I can probably get away with four virtual processors, but I would recommend that you make this a dual core at the very least, so two. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply and click okay. And with the beta test virtual machine selected, I'm going to go ahead and click connect here. Now it's going to open up the virtual machine and I'm going to click start. And I find that, you know, it kind of gets stuck here at this point here. So uh, what I typically do to get this to work is just hit control alt delete again and make sure I press a key very quickly so that it registers to boot from that ISO. Now, of course, I can start installing the Windows operating system. So like I said, I don't have a product key that is available to activate this version of Windows, but you can select skip and temporarily not enter uh, an activation code like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And in this case, I'm gonna select Pro, but you could, all, you could just as easily use Home I'm going to accept the license agreement, click next, and we'll choose custom, install the operating system, and we have the 64 gigabyte virtual drive, and with that selected, I can press next. Now Windows is going to do its thing to install the operating system. I'll fast forward this part because it's a little boring, quite frankly. Okay, so now we're restarting for the first time. We'll continue to see several options when you're installing uh, Windows on a new virtual machine. Okay, so like I said, it may prompt you for your product key. Just simply select uh, do this later. And we'll just use Express Settings. So like installing a brand new operating system, you're going to want to make some choices here and let Microsoft know how to set up this copy of Windows. So I'm just gonna say I own it. And I'm gonna enter in one of the accounts that I use with Microsoft here to sign in. And it's prompting me for a password for that account. I'm gonna create a new pin and click OK. And of course, different versions of Windows will prompt you for different uh, prompts along the way. Like I said, this is one of the earliest versions of Windows 10. And uh, you know, I know that some of this has changed since the beginning here. So uh, we're just gonna wait a little bit here and we should get things up and running. So there we go. I've got a virtual version of Windows 10 running on my desktop computer. It's completely separate from my regular installation of Windows. So if I install some software that's going to replace key files or possibly damage uh, pre-existing 
installations of the various software I use. Not a problem. I, there's nothing crucial here. Uh, of course, it'll still do, as you can see here, the updates for Windows. So it will continue to update Windows in the background. But I'm free to install any software I wish and not have to worry about it affecting my actual production machine. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.